What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. I have a very special guest. Here is Tina Huang. That's right, in the flesh, because we are at the content creator meetup in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, I've interviewed Luke, I've interviewed Ken, and now I get the extreme privilege to interview Tina. <clears throat> if you do not know who Tina is, she is a YouTube extraordinaire, an ex-fang data scientist, entrepreneur, and a personal friend. She's inspired hundreds of thousands of data scientists on their way to break into the field, and in doing so, she has broken into our hearts. Oh, wow. That was good. <laughs> I did not expect that one. Thank you so much oh. for joining. I really appreciate you being here. Of course. <laughs> so, you know, it's been just absolutely amazing just one meeting you in person because we've talked, we've chatted, we've done collaborations uh, uh, on not just our channels, but different channels as well. Mm -hmm. So it's been super great meeting you. Um, how have you been feeling about like the whole meetup so far? It's been really good because this is our second meetup, but it's the first time I've actually met Alex here. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the first time around we were trying to figure things out, but the second time, all props to Ken. He made everything really, really good. 100%. Um, the events that happened, the sponsors that were there, it, they were really in line with with us as content creators, as what we're doing. And it's just been very inspiring in general because people are coming here with their own perspectives, their own way of pr producing content and their own like content strategies and visions. And I think content creation is generally a very lonely activity. Mm -hmm. So being able to have that perspective and creating content with other people incorporating other people's perspectives is very inspiring yeah absolutely i 100 percent agree it's been great just meeting everybody because i meet everyone online but i'm in i'm very much in my own silo so mm -hmm. it's really cool to meet everybody all right let's see <clears throat> i have a wide array of questions none of them are necessarily related to each other but um i'm hoping to get to know you and let other people get to know you a little bit better as a person and as um just a person instead of just as like a data science YouTuber, right? As a person, get yeah. to know me. Exactly, well, and who knows what will come of that? Yeah, who, who knows these days? Like, I don't know. I don't even know these questions. I'm just gonna say whatever <laughs> comes into my mind. Exactly. Right, shoot. <laughs> yeah, again, there's no, some are, some are personal, some aren't, right? Um, so my, one, of, one of the best things that I've found is learning about people's like backgrounds uh, in terms of like, people who inspire them like who would you say is somebody who has been like really uh, important in your life to help bring you to where you are is there like a single person a book it doesn't have to be a person it could be anything it's a really good question um i do read a lot and i think i have incorporated a lot of things that i read into my life mm -hmm. if there's one person that has like is really changed my perspective of life, it would be my mom, um, because she has a very unconventional approach. Mm -hmm. So I feel like for most Asian people, especially, there's this idea of getting good grades, like going to a good school and then getting a good job, right? My mom is the complete opposite. She was like, Tina, why are you working at Facebook? Um, this is like, you should be doing your own thing. So it, it's, it's very different. Um, and That's also, awesome. um, I think another, a book that is just coming to my head right now is is a book called uh, it's by Viktor Frankl. It's called Man's Search for Meaning. It's it's a very short book, highly recommended to people. It's about Viktor Frankl's experience in the Holocaust, and mm. it was like not great, if, yeah. if 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 to be put lightly. And through that, he was developed a, a a philosophy essentially. And I think one of the most impactful things I learned from that. There was this quote, I'm gonna paraphrase here, is that the last human freedom is your ability to respond to whatever it is that happening to you. Like nobody mm. can take away your last human freedom, no matter what happens. Interesting. And that was very inspiring to me because obviously I wasn't in the Holocaust, but anything that did happen in my life, like there was ups, there was downs, um, I kind of like hold that really deeply in my heart because again, like the way that I respond to the external environment is going to be my last freedom. So mm -hmm. knowing that I always have that control is is very empowering. Yeah, that's that's really powerful. I I've thought about some similar things, but never in that light. Like it's really interesting how, yeah, you you, you get to choose how you respond. Mm -hmm. Nobody can choose for you or yeah. or make you choose a specific way. Yeah, I love that. And so like your mom, how would you say like that has that way of her inspiring you of being more hey do your own thing you don't have to do this this and this has that pushed you more towards being like more of an entrepreneur 
or kind of just do whatever you want? Like, how has that impacted you? Yeah, for sure. Um, so nobody in my family has managed to hold down a job. Sorry, I'm like revealing that about my family. <laughs> Literally nobody <laughs> has managed to hold down a job because my entire family is very much entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. uh, I am by far is the most highly educated person in my family. Yeah. Um, I think it's just the way that my mom thinks about things. And I mean, in general, my, my family, in some ways, the way that they think about things, they don't, they don't see things as a path. Like they are always been people. It's like, I don't know what's happening, uh, but we'll figure it out. Right. Mm -hmm. Like it, they also grew up um, in a place in a time in China that was very volatile. Like nobody knows what, what's happening. So mm -hmm. it's, it's like this confidence that you can be in control of whatever it is that you choose to do. And in some ways that is very empowering because even for, say like you work at a company, nothing wrong with that, but you actually don't have a lot of control in a company. They can fire right. you at any point. Like your mm -hmm. boss tells you to do something, but when you're doing it by yourself, you actually have a lot of control. I mean, also in bad ways, because <laughs> maybe you like you screw up and you lose everything. Like that's part of that control as well. So that's something that was kind of like beaten into me as a, as a child. They never told me to do specific things, but they, that's like what they always told me. And then my mom's version of training me is essentially throwing me into very uncomfortable situations. <laughs> like this. <laughs> it's just like, you just got to go for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, she's like, I, I mean, an example was, you know, when I was 17 years old, I was supposed to be renting a place. I was, I was, um, she wanted me to help manage a property, right? I was 17 years old, like literally don't know what's happening. So she's like, okay, you gotta do this now. Something like, oh crap, like I, I got to <laughs> do this now. And you know what, it worked because now I'm like, oh man, like I know how to do this now. Mm -hmm. So that's always been uh, the way that she, she does things. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. I, I've noticed somewhat similar things with other people who I've met. They're like, my parents very much gave me freedom to do what I want and like push me to be more, open-minded mm -hmm. which is really unique because most of the people i work with they're like you know my parents they wanted me to do this route and i kind of just did this and they were always like wish i didn't did more my parents were the very very similar they were just like as long as you're happy money is not the most important thing in the world as long as you're happy um and you know that's kind of i've always kind of followed that and so i kind of follow my heart and my passions mm -hmm. more than like i'm gonna go be a lawyer to make a lot of money I almost went down that path. So, I mean, that's that's really great. I feel like me as a parent, I need to be, I want to be like that. <laughs> I want to be like your mom. <laughs> I feel like, okay, so my mom is, is not exactly like that. She's not like, go follow your passion. It's, right. it's she does believe, she like, how do I explain it? Like, she expects success mm -hmm. from me um, and not necessarily like do whatever I want and end up on the streets. She'd be like, that's not good. <laughs> that's, that's, um, that's good. <laughs> right? That's like, a good I, thing. I'm assuming like your parents are not like, okay, you can end up on the streets if <laughs> exactly. you want. Um, but yeah, like there, there is that like structure. Um, they do expect things from me and there are like, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to explain. Like they do expect things from me. It's not necessarily just follow like my happiness or my passion. There's, mm -hmm. I think in Asian culture in, in like essentially there is a sense of duty like you do need to do your duty and you need to create a life for yourself that you can be successful in those ways um but within the way in which you do this is up to you yeah no that's great i i i, I totally like i understand the asian culture fairly well i'm obviously not as entwined but like you know i've i've been a part of that in in many different ways and I, yeah, the American culture is just not like that in in several ways. And so, yeah, I think you've probably experienced that a lot more than I have and probably a lot of other people in the U.S., but really interesting, really, really fascinating. So, like, you've done your YouTube thing. You're still doing it. What's what's next? You've done it for, what, two years? Two, two years and a half years? Oh, yeah, two years exactly. Actually. Exactly two years. So, like, you know, you're – it's always funny because, like, two years for a YouTube career is like halfway yeah. through your career, right? It is. So what's next? Like, are, are there any like big things that you want to either share or just like some things that you're excited about that you have planned? Yeah, I think I'm pretty realistic in, in a sense. Like I know that I am not going to be doing YouTube and making videos for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. um, that's very rare that anybody ever does. So knowing that right now, um, I love making videos. Like this is something that I love to do. However, I don't want this to be my primary revenue stream because that's mm -hmm. very stressful. It's very stressful because you have to hit views and um, it's harder to experiment with things because if you just do a wild card, it's very high likelihood that it's not going to do well. So for me right now, I want to keep doing YouTube, but I have 
essentially two companies that I'm working on. The first one is Learn Media, which is kind of why we're all together right now. Mm -hmm. It's a, um, it's kind of like an agency in which we have a bunch of creators that we have over here. And then uh, we also have brands coming to us and we understand like, like basically we ask them like, what is it that you want to accomplish? Do you want to get a lot of views? Do you want people to do conversions? And then we help them design campaigns. And I think we're in a very good position to do this because we are content creators. And Absolutely. a lot of brands are not very good at that. No offense <laughs> to certain brands. I like don't really understand how advertisement work, how content creators work. Um, so that's one of them. And the other thing I'm doing right now is called the Lonely Octopus platform. Ooh, see, um, I don't, I don't know about this. Lonely like, Octopus. Yeah, t tell me about this because I want, I don't know what this is. <laughs> yeah, so it's something <laughs> I'm working on with, uh, working with Luke on, uh, mm -hmm. Luke Bruce. So it, it's. Because I think my channel over time, it's grown out of data science. It's more about like continuous learning education. It's really about adult learning and how to pretty much like craft a life that you want, which is not mm. something that you can just go get a job and, and be happy doing that. Uh, it's, it has to be a very intentional process. Mm -hmm. So what I really, is the most simple thing is that um, most people, they want to learn something, they want to do something, they want to transition to data science, transition to data analytics. So it's not necessarily they don't know how to do it it's because they don't do it mm -hmm. right um so I, I think and why is it that people don't do it so we interviewed a, a lot of different people and there were two things that cropped up the first one is that people were lonely hence the name lonely <laughs> octopus i love that <laughs> very very direct in the name <laughs> because octopi have eight arms so you can make eight friends <laughs> that is so sweet <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so that was one of them. Like they feel really alone. I think it makes a lot of sense because when you're an adult, um, people around you are not going to be wanting to do the same things anymore. You have responsibilities. Mm -hmm. You can't just like sit there and not go to your job or like not take care of your family. So that's you shouldn't. Thing. Yeah, you, sh you shouldn't do that. Like very <laughs> bad. Would not recommend. <laughs> and then um, the other thing is people are afraid because they are they have this feeling like, what if I do all of this and then nothing comes out of it? Like, what if I do the data analytics if it takes me six months to do and nothing, I, I, like nothing happens out of this? Mm -hmm. It's a really big fear. And I think it stops people from actually starting in the first place. So uh, Lonely Octopus is about, basically, if you go through the program, uh, we're not, I'm gonna go like, you, you're gonna get a job, right? But I'm gonna get you to a place in which you actually complete what it is that you want to do. So, for example, the Google Data Analytics Certificate, you'll get that and you're gonna be in a position in which you can be interviewing. So that's the promise mm. if, if you stick here. Um, I think in terms of content, like we are more about accountability, group learning. I've been live streaming for over a year and a half now uh, with my study with me live streams. And that's kind of where this stems from. It's about keep keeping each other accountable to doing the things that you want to do. Mm -hmm. And we're content second, accountability first. I think there's amazing content that's out there already, like Coursera, um, like Udacity and things like that. Like we don't go in, we don't need to go make more content. We just have to get people to actually use the content yeah. dropout rates are between four and ten like only four to ten percent of people actually complete a course which is ridiculous so we Wild. want to make it so that people going through this program are able to do this um i'm not going to go too much because i feel like i'm going to ramble for a <laughs> lot but it, we want to make this program like very incentivized so for example going to data analytics we're going to data science it's not going to be like i can buy mentorship no it's about being groups of people, you're going towards the same goal. And if you're, we're going to keep you accountable. You're going to have a tracking, everything that you're doing. And if you're consistent, you earn Octa coins <laughs> in which you can then trade for uh, different things that you want. Like you can, yeah, you can say like 16 Octa coins, you can trade for a mentorship session, a resume review, mm. one on one with maybe me or Luke. So that's how we want to incentivize people to go through it. That's cool. Are you guys already doing that? Yeah, so um, that's fantastic. Alpha was pretty much my live stream, uh -huh. and we're building out the beta right now. Should be long. by fall to later this year. That is fantastic. Do you already have like a website built that people can go to, like a landing page or anything? Um, so we are building that right now. Oh, okay. Uh, so that should be out pretty soon, and we're just hacking it together. Like I'm gonna see this. It's like kind of terrible <laughs> but because it's the beta right so i think what we're trying to do is like we're not going to build an entire platform we're putting together a lot of third-party tools sure um and as long as that works then. okay well if by the time you guys are watching this it's out i will have a link in the description so you can go check it out i don't know if it's going to be any good but based off what she told me it sounds really really interesting so if you're a lonely octopi uh, it sounds like you can make some octopi friends. <laughs> yeah, you have eight arms. You can make at least eight friends. Um, don't blame Luke for this theme. That was completely me. I, I don't know. I just, no, like, you mean you get the credit. Luke does not get the credit. Oh, no. like I don't think Luke wants to get the credit for this one uh, because it doesn't really make any sense. But anyway. Well, either way, it's a really unique name. 
nevertheless. Because you can't forget that, can you? Right? If you're like, I'm part of the Lonely <laughs> Octopus program. Are you really going to forget that? <laughs> You'll never. I'll never forget it. <laughs> so, you know, you've gone through, I mean, I've talked to you several times. You've gone through a lot, not just like with your YouTube journey, but your career as well as personal. Looking back, like going back and talking to yourself, let's say three years ago, right before you started YouTube, in that space where you were still had a big tech job, you were just starting YouTube, is there any piece of advice that you, or, or anything that you wish you had have known going into this that you're like, if I had known this, if I had known this in either my career or my YouTube journey or whatever, that that would have made a huge impact on a lot of the decisions I had made, or I have made up until now? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a really good question. Um, <laughs> I think what I would have told myself is to be more kind to myself. Mm. I think that's a really big one because I've always been the type of person who's like, I, I must like achieve this goal. Um, you know, like I need to do this, I need to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think even prior to three years ago, because of that was the way that I was, I'm like, I got to get good grades. Like, you know, I got to do my master's and do all these things. I was never able to explore outside of that. I was afraid of failure, mm -hmm. extremely afraid of failure. Mm -hmm. And that means I never explored outside of domains that I felt I was going to do good in. Um, so being, I guess, like being kind to myself as in like accepting the fact that it's okay for this to happen. It's okay to not push myself so hard all the time. And pretty much back in December was a really hard time for me because I was trying to balance a full-time job with YouTube. And I was not kind to myself. Like I must make YouTube videos and they have to be this quality and I must do good on my job as well. But it kind of hit a point where I'm like, wow, like I'm literally having a mental breakdown. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, I think that's what I would tell myself just in general. Like it's okay to be kind to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's fantastic advice. Really, really. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of intertwined advice in that, in just what you said. It's not only be kind, it's also like, you know, take it easy on yourself in terms of like workload. Take it easy on, your, on yourself in terms of like expectations. Like, you know, there's a lot of advice in that little, like the little sentence that you said, you know, All right, I love that. So let me check because I have one more question that I believe I wanted to answer. I don't want to miss it. Um, this one goes back to your YouTube channel. Of course, we've talked about a variety of things, but your channel has grown incredibly fast, especially in the data space. Like, you know, you passed Ken, you've passed me. You were always past me, I think. I don't think I ever was like... When did you start your YouTube channel? Like two and a half years ago. So maybe you did pass me so at I some point. I think we were like around... Because I think Ken was first and everybody yes. just kind of like showed up. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you know, you you if you haven't seen her channel... I'm going to give it a plug at the end, but, but again, you should go check it out because she's at like 380,000, I believe. Is it higher than that now? Something like that, yeah. You have, you have really taken off in a huge way in a lot of, where a lot of other creators haven't. Um, you know, what, what do you think has like made you stand out or made you grow at that rate that maybe other, not that we don't have it, but like what's, what's made you kind of have that growth that maybe other channels haven't? What do you think? What's that special sauce that I need to do? <laughs> it always asks. Like, it's like, it's like, a, you know, startups, like what's your special sauce? Yeah. Um, I need, I need to know this so that I can then pass you in like the future. And the thing is like, I think each content creator is different, right? Like the style of content, like it really, each person has to find what it is that they, they are good at, like what their strength is, what makes them different. Um, I think for me, I did a lot of experimenting. I started off very, very much about career and data science, very specific. And um, I guess there's like two factors. The first one is being very authentic to myself. Like I don't try to pretend to know things because I don't know things. Like, you know, that's just kind of the way it is. And I'm just trying to share the fact that I don't know things. <laughs> and people love that. They're like, thank you. I don't know things either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, I, I think it was like, I don't know things, but this is how I'm going to approach it. And like, eventually I'll know things probably. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's one. And the other one is I'm very experimental because I, you know, there's some, some channels are very like specific to a certain domain, um, which I think is really good if that's like the domain that you're very interested in and you, especially if you're doing it as a business right like if this is like where you want to niche down i think for me i'm very experimental in the sense like if i feel like making content that's outside of 
the data niche or something like that i'm gonna go do it mm -hmm. like worst case scenario does bad and i just go back to the original niche right <laughs> um best case scenario is i i get out of that local maximum mm -hmm. and i open up in a completely new area of exploration yeah. um and for me i think that those breakthroughs was going from data science into how to learn in general like mm -hmm. adult-based learning again it's very that is very integral to to what it is i'm doing and another yeah i guess like the it, there is like connection i'm just like i'm gonna make a video about my cat like i'm not gonna do that the connection <laughs> i have a vision for my channel um and the vision is that i'm i want to be a place in which young and ambitious people are able to find resources like very practical resources on how it is that they want to design their lives how it is that they want to um achieve their goals so that they are able to craft a life that they want because i don't think you should allow other people ever to craft your life it is very hard to do so but it is very worth it so that is kind of like a central theme i've done like productivity base i've done like learning stuff now i'm just like commentary about certain things and like how to uh, like all of this kind of has a similar thread mm -hmm. in my mind yeah no that's fantastic i mean like yeah i know they're, they're doing a workshop downstairs right now yeah. um but that's that's fantastic it sounds like just a lot of testing trying things out like not being afraid to branch out from the content that has already done well and you know i've i've enjoyed a lot of the kind of different stuff that you've made that i'm like I thought you did data science, but you do a lot of like productivity stuff, which uh, I like the adult based learning stuff that you've done because I'm like, I kind of somewhat do a little bit of that, but you, you have leaned into it really heavily, which is really neat. Um, so that's all the questions I had for you. Thank you so much, guys. If you have not heard of Tina or seen her channel, absolutely check it out. She's absolutely phenomenal. Her content is amazing and she's always doing different stuff. Um, and so if you like like listening to her and her personality and her as a person, I highly recommend you checking it out. Tina, thank you so much for joining me on my channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you for those kind words and thanks for having me.